colleagues, friends and consumers, international members. As we close the Fair Digital Finance Forum and come to the end of this week marking World Consumer Rights Day 2022, we at Consumers International would all like to thank you for attending uh, and contributing so beautifully and brilliantly to the rich discussion throughout the week. The forum has for the first time enabled a global conversation around consumer-centered digital finance. It brought together influential thinkers, practitioners and advocates and brought them together across government and business and civil society throughout the week. At the very beginning, we launched the consumer vision for fair digital finance and our senior leadership dove into the four themes of the vision safe, inclusive, data protected and private and sustainable. And they looked for opportunities for collective action across those areas. One of those opportunities, which we launched on the same day, was the Fair Digital Finance Accelerator. Together with 40 consumer associations in low and middle income countries, um, we brought together uh, our partners, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Consultative Group to Assist the Poor to talk about the accelerator. The accelerator demonstrates the opportunities for collaboration and it'll build a platform for consumer associations in low and middle income countries to share insight, to build training and to build constructive bridges to regulators. We heard how important that was throughout the week. In the following days this week, we looked and double clicked into those four pillars of the vision. Day two was centered on inclusion, and this highlighted, among other things, the impact of digital finance on women. And our partners at UNCDF stressed the importance of viewing financial consumer protection through a gender lens. Day two was also World Consumer Rights Day itself, a pivotal moment for the consumer advocacy movement. We saw members around the world united to take action to promote the theme, of fair digital finance and to make sure that consumers everywhere are aware of consumer rights. In settings as diverse as Chile, Rwanda, Fiji, Myanmar, Spain, our members held activities engaging and innovating from public consultations, mainstream media appearances and pop-up stands in rural locations, just to name a few. We're thrilled to have heard from you on that day and send you our very best wishes. We know that World Consumer Rights Day happens every day for our consumer advocates. On Wednesday, as we explained, explored the theme of safe digital finance, we launched our statement on buy now, pay later products. This included six clear action steps for regulators and governments. It was endorsed by our members across nine countries. And what's fantastic is that that has been heavily featured in mainstream media. Um, in Australia, uh, our, the, the campaign by choice has already been picked up by 9,000 consumer advocates. We're really looking forward to that statement, which is a great example of cross-border collaboration by consumer advocates can see progress uh, in the countries that have, that have supported it and elsewhere. Now, yesterday, we looked in depth at what it means to be data protected and private. As part of that, we were able to bring consumer advocacy groups into direct conversation with the OECD. This was a fireside chat exploring the G20 OECD high level principles on consumer uh, financial consumer protection, excuse me. These are currently being revised for the first time in a decade. Uh, it was fantastic to bring yet more consumer advocacy view on how they should be shaped so that they are timely and relevant for all of us. And it brings us to today where we ended by hearing how digital finance impacts younger consumers. Our next generation of leaders uh, who are consumer advocates under the age of 30 around the world, they told us that they want to see the next generation driving change um, they see digital finance as fair and sustainable and the importance of this for them. We also looked and double clicked on what sustainable finance means. What are the opportunities for digital finance to drive 
sustainability, to support consumers to take more sustainable choices and heard multiple innovations uh, in particular from Europe. I'd like to say that this event uh, has clearly not been possible without the wonderful participation of our members from all around the world. Our sincere thanks to you and we look forward to uh, yet another year towards uh, building a fair, safe and sustainable marketplace for all of us. Our sincere thanks also to the partners who joined us and helped shape this agenda. These include the OECD, UNCTAD, UNCDF, the Inter-American Development Bank, the Better Than Cash Alliance, the MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth, and many, many more. This type of broad partnership together with consumer advocacy groups is really exciting and it marks a growing recognition of the need to hear and listen to the consumer advocate voice. Of course, the event would not have been possible without a wonderful and dedicated team at Consumers International. All of them have contributed throughout the week and in the run up to this event. Uh, I'd like to in particular mention Josie Palmy and Matt Jones, without whom uh, this would not have been possible. Thank you for driving this forward. Whilst the forum comes to an end this week, let's keep the conversation open. All of our public sessions are available here on this YouTube channel, but we'd like you to stay in contact with us so that together we can ensure a digital finance, financial services sector and a digital marketplace that's inclusive, that's safe, that's data protected and private, and that's sustainable for all of us. Thank you and goodbye.